<clears throat> All right, guys, welcome back here. It's oof, nine o'clock. It's a Monday. It's May 10th, and I hope everyone's ready to go. So, pre market. A little bit slow, but that's fine. We've seen a lot of pre-markets in May that are a little bit slower, but then once the market opens, things start picking up. And um, I'm kind of thinking maybe we'll see that a little bit today. So we'll, we'll see. Um, we got ALF here as one of the lead gappers that we're watching pretty closely. It's on its third stair, but the third stair kind of failed here a little bit. Got a little bit slippery um, after it was not able to continue. You could see a lot of people um, kind of exited this stock and took their had their stops probably here. And um, now this ticker is kind of on the backside a little bit here temporarily. So we'll see if we get back up on this one. Um, fairly new ticker actually. And you can kind of see here recent IPO. Definitely on the four hour trend, we got a nice uptrend. We have resistance though above and we are also kind of forming a little bit of a pennant here um, with the resistance uh, from the top, but then the support coming together. So this is, I would argue that around five, 520, um, this is really an area that we wanna break out. If we could break out of this area on ALF, um, we might see a nice run uh, past six. But for now, this is kind of the area to be watching. Um, let me go ahead and refresh this. Actually, let me save. I added a bunch of new tickers on here, the watch list today. <clears throat> this is a USA biotech software infrastructure company, 11 million float, so it has that spike ability, 41 million market cap, nice small cap, um, everything's looking pretty good. Has a catalyst um, here on May 7th, and then uh, let's see here, pre-market news coming out as well. The company recently appointed Ron Spears as CRO, Chief Revenue Officer. I was kind of hoping they would have some new news, but I think it's uh, just kind of a multi-day run here, new IPO play. So everyone's kind of thinking, you know, how high can this one go? Unfortunately, no, no super new news today on this one. Um, that's probably the, a little bit of a down draw. Um, overall, it is our lead gapper. We have a few other kind of lower price tickers. A lot of tickers around a dollar today, um, relatively. Uh, CFMS, for example, we had a nice little front side move here. Um, I think I'm actually up on this. This is the one I'm up on the most. I'm up 150 bucks right now pre-market. Not really anything too crazy. Um, just you know, small size and taking some stabs here and there, just seeing how you know we get a feel for things. But at the moment, it's it's still pretty light. But like I said before, it could be promising. Uh, we'll we'll wait and see. Um, CFMS. Here we go, 90 million float, you know, a little bit on the higher end, but at least it's under 100, 150 million market cap, also a little bit on the high end, uh, but the float's really the one that's a much more. Usually, you know, we're looking for under 50 million, um, ideally under 10 million. USA medical device company, uh, clearance by the FDA for company's uh, identity imprint knee replacement system. That sounds pretty good. Um, that news came out this morning at 7.30, so good to see that. Um, you can really see this ticker really holding the highs here really good. So first leg here This leg was about 47% then we pull back here around 15% uh, So it's looking pretty healthy Decent relative volume for the fact that this ticker has only been trading since 730 about an hour and a half and we're You know relatively very very high in volume on this one weekly chart very rough yeah, I mean, this 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 is one of those classic tickers that needs to pump it, right? Because they have under a dollar. And as a NASDAQ ticker, you're not allowed to be under a dollar or else you get delisted. So you get like the six month period, the grace period, blah, blah, blah. But you got to, you know, you got to get your price up. If, if that means reverse splits, if that means pumping your stocks by paying some promoters, if that means coming out with PRs or actually, you know, doing what you're supposed to do, you know, there's many ways you could you could pump up the price, but basically they got to get their share price back over a dollar. Um, that's that's the key for this company right now. It is so. The question is, you know, how well is it going to hold this area? We got S O L Y popping up right now. What is this one? Looks like it's it looks like an acquisition. Yeah, acquired for twenty two. Okay, we're not going to look at that. DTSS, another ticker here worth considering. Chinese software infrastructure company, 
announces cooperation with major distributor with objective to providing 5G messaging products to um, 550,000 enterprise clients by the end of 2021. I like this part the most, um, cooperation uh, with a major distributor. It doesn't seem like they say, but that's, you know, I like collaborations uh, or partnerships, I should really say, um, with larger companies. That usually gets me pretty uh, excited. Those tend to perform pretty well. Um, but, you know, the ticker's still under 40%, and usually that, you know, makes me a little bit less excited about it. You know, I want to see a ticker, you know, instantly pop over 40%, hold 50%, 60%, and then, you know, we're looking for those 100% rallies. So um, right now, pre-market, you know, still a little bit slow. Um, PTE, yeah, another one. I see it's being called out in the chat as well um, by Recovery D Road. So... I don't actually know if I put, yeah, actually, okay, I did. Let me go back. USA Biotech, 65 million floats, 75 million market cap. Foot ulcer trial met primary and secondary endpoints. Okay, diabetic, uh, diabetic foot ulcer. <clears throat> so that's good. It means that the studies they were doing on it uh, has met um, some of the goals, some of the, what they had planned for it. Here you can see 70 primary endpoint, 70% of patients receiving skin TE plus had wound closure at 12 weeks versus 34% of patients receiving SOC alone. Secondary endpoint percent area reduction PAR at 12 weeks was significantly greater for the skin TE plus SOC treatment group. Well, that sounds like a good catalyst, but uh, it doesn't sound like um, it's moving the needle that much. Around 30% was the high gap. A lot of pressure on this company. You can see it's you know another one of these dollar companies, uh, roughly around a dollar. I find them a little bit more uh, harder to trade because that spread, that percentage spread, is quite high. And then sometimes you know you get stuck in positions and whatnot. Do a little bit of technical analysis here. One dollar is always one of those key psychological zones, so I do kind of like to note that. But sometimes the key areas, like you know, whole dollars and stuff, um, I don't just blindly note unless it seems like a really significant zone because you know that's always something you have in mind anyway. One twenty-five. It looks like somewhere in this quarter zone. Uh, I think I would want to be aware here. Then uh, roughly around two dollars again. We had some highs and opens and close in this area, so PTE could be an option. I mean, we have right now four tickers worth um, watching, but uh, yeah. So yeah, that's that's pretty much how the pre-market's been going. I did do a small overnight trade on SNDL. Let me show you guys this one. I, I entered it on Friday. Um, I did close it pre-market today. Um, so here you can see we bought this uh, ticker on a Friday. Uh, it was I had I placed the limit order like you know two three hours after the stream, um, and I didn't really think I was gonna get filled. Let me go here to a full no. Let me go actually to like a five minute chart. You can kind of see here. Um, this had a nice big run up, and I noticed that you know 0.75 six roughly was huge huge support for this ticker, and when we cracked it. Um, we didn't hold this and we came right back above. To me, I see this all the time on the one minute and the five minute um, where you come back up and then you have a retest and then you launch for that secondary rally. That's kind of what I was thinking we might see. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to trade this till seven and then it shot all the way down and then I sold as we moved back up. Um, that was kind of my original plan. I wanted to sell it pre-market. Um, and then I accidentally bought here when I wanted to sell 2000. I was like, ah, oh, that was annoying. And then I just sold all of it right away. And then I was thinking, you know, this is still a good play. I like this one. Um, so let me try to rebuy. I had one limit order. I got filled here. And then I have a second limit order a little bit lower that did not get filled. I had a 2% balance. I'm not sure. I might just close this one. 
Um, this is such a small position size we have open right now, but we'll kind of see how it goes. Um, I might hold it overnight again, how it you know, trades today, but again, this is such a small position size that, um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know. It's like a tenth of my uh, average, average size here, so. Um, I don't know. I think I think there is opportunity for a multi-day run here. I think we have good upside. Um, we have probably around I don't know 25 to maybe even 30 percent upside. Um, really depends. And you know the downside's kind of limited in my eyes. If we crack this kind of 75.75 zone area and we keep selling off, I'll probably be closing it fairly soon as the as it starts selling off. So um, even if it does sell off, I think it's a good risk reward trade. So that's that's kind of why I went along with it. Not to mention, you know, it had such a strong sell-off here um, from the highs, and I think there's going to be a lot of back holders on this ticker. So there's going to be just a lot of people not looking to sell. And any, I mean, this is down 85%. I mean, usually already around 70%, you start seeing these huge dead cat bounces. So even if we get any sort of dead cat bounce, it could be quite interesting. Uh, ALF back up here. I think ALF is probably one of the more interesting ones today. It's go it's going to be somewhat tricky, I feel like, to trade since it's a recent IPO. There's not a lot of historical price action we can kind of gauge off of. Um, not to mention, it had a pretty uh, pretty solid little pre-market. You know, one leg up, second leg up, third leg up, and then you know, well, we'll see how it how it goes here at the uh, at the open. I and O. Very light volume. Day trading doesn't look interesting. <clears throat> Earnings come out. Looks like today at 3.30. So it's up in anticipation. I don't know. Maybe we'll see a little bit of a fill back here. 16% upside potential. Um, but almost an equally amount of downside potential. I don't know. It's not really a trade for me, but if you know more about this ticker, it could be, could be interesting, you know. Um, for me, it's uh, there's a lot of support on this ticker in these areas here after also selling off 80%. Yeah, it could, could, could be in a really ripe spot for a nice bounce, but technically already had a bit of a bounce and then a huge sell-off again, so I, I don't know. So most of my focus is probably gonna be on ALF. And then kind of, I'm gonna probably switch around a little bit today, depending on really what's what's moving and what's not. I you know, think today's a day you wanna be extra flexible. <clears throat> Major news here. Uh, I think there's uh, two or three main topics we should probably be aware of. Um, so there was a hack so if you notice a little bit increase in oil prices, um, there's an extended pipeline shutdown really affecting the southeast of America. Um, right? Here. Oh yeah, here it is. An extended pipeline shutdown could impact gas prices in the southeast. You're gonna see this across most major news networks. Um, here we go, hack pipeline may stay shut for days, raising concerns about fuel supplies. Um, Biden is already working on uh, plans uh, to strengthen cyber defenses. There's, if you read these articles, it seems well, it doesn't even just seem like it. I mean, there has been ongoing uh, kind of cyber attacks. They're getting more and more popular, or <laughs> popular is, I don't know if that's the right word, but uh, they're they're appearing a lot more in the U.S., especially with you know large institutions uh, inside the government. Um, so that makes total sense that Biden now is trying to make a task force a little bit to, to uh, figure that out, strengthen their cyber defenses a little bit. So I, that, that's definitely an article or um, a situation going around here. Um, there was a lot of clashes in Jerusalem um, with the Palestinian families, um, you, yeah, having, having issues or, well, what's the best way to put it? Um, 
basically demonstrating against the Israel settle settlers coming back and uh, that ongoing issue. So those are the kind of two topics here that I found pretty much across the board on every major news site that I've been browsing. Um, overall, the SPY here is basically break even. Ooh, might open a little bit green. Yeah, here you can see the US pipeline again, Bloomberg. I think that also had it. I didn't see this one yet. Biggest crypto exchange, Binance briefly suspended withdrawals. I wonder if that's on all tickers. I wonder how Facebook is doing right now because after that Apple report came out with the new security, here we go. Just 4% of iPhone users have opted into app tracking after updating their phones to Apple's new iOS 14.5 with new introduced uh, privacy features. This is exactly what companies like Facebook worried about. So basically now you have to opt in to letting apps track you as opposed to pretty much default mode. Um, so yeah, Facebook is taking a little bit of a hit, um, but I wouldn't say anything too major yet. Uh, maybe once it goes down around 10% all the way back to 300, that could be a little bit more interesting. Um, a lot of sell volume here coming in as well. But Facebook is still you know, one of the bigger companies here. If we just go to infinite market cap, um, I think they're like, what, eight or no, that's uh, Bitcoin. So they're still in the top 10 assets um, by market, um, market cap. Here we go at almost a trillion dollars, uh, right below Bitcoin. So Bitcoin's really crawling up here. Gold, Apple, Saudi Aramco, Microsoft, Amazon, Alphabet, Silver, Bitcoin, Facebook, Tencent, which is a Chinese uh, uh, software internet company, Berkshire Hathaway, Tesla, Alibaba, TSMC, Taiwanese uh, semiconductor company, and so on. Look at Visa always up here. I always forget how big Visa is, I think. I think like Ethereum really creeping up here. I mean, look at this. Ethereum now, 33%. Uh, up in the last seven days. What a freaking run, honestly. At, like, now over $4,000. Hoo-wee! No joke. Always wondering how long before Bitcoin is worth more than gold. Honestly, it's a good question. I mean, it pretty much just has to go 10x, right? And then the market cap is going to be around 10 trillion for Bitcoin. So it's not that far away from gold. Debris from Chinese rocket re-entering Earth atmosphere crashed into the Indian Ocean, Chinese space agency said. Uh, I know that was kind of a topic I saw over the weekend a few times, you know, what's going on, you know, with that. So. I wanted to highlight it here just in case. Hopefully you guys all had a good Mother's Day. That was this weekend on Saturday. Or was it Sunday? I already forgot. It was Sunday. Why did I think it was Saturday? I don't know. PTE kind of crawling up here, holding this area. A lot of tickers roughly around the $1 mark. It's going to be kind of interesting. I'm usually not the biggest fan of, of trading tickers, you know, below $2. It's kind of where I'm like, ugh. But I think that's that's really probably where the opportunity is going to be today more than anything. So I'm going to keep an open mind and get aggressive on what I need to get aggressive on. Otherwise, you know, I'll try to be as patient as possible till then. <laughs> yeah, Nick, I mean, it would be pretty. I don't I don't know if we're going to get there this year. I, I mean, anything's possible. I never say never, but uh I, I would have gave it a little bit longer, uh, for sure. Maybe one or two, I mean, two, uh, two to three years or so. 
if it does. But I think it will. My coffee's looking a little gnarly. I was eating one of those uh, waffles with uh, honey in the middle. Amazing, I forgot what they're called. Anyway, I dropped it in my coffee and I can't, I can't really get it out. So now I've just been sipping an extra sweet coffee with waffle in it. Ooh. It's a bit weird, I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, Brent, I kind of feel the same. I mean, like, it, it literally just went from 4,000 to 60,000. So it, it already did its 10x this year uh, from, from the lows. So I'm not sure if we're going to get a 20x uh, or, yeah, basically a 20x. So basically another, another 10x from there. I don't know. Ethereum, Ethereum correction or 5K coming. I wouldn't be surprised if we got to 5k um at this point you know it's it's just a pretty much another 20 percent it, it could easily happen tomorrow or, th or sometime this week um but if we do hit 5k i think we're going to start consolidating a little bit having a healthy pullback after that but we'll, we'll see I, I wouldn't be surprised though if we hit 5k Nine twenty-two, just about here so we got another eight minutes before the market opens uh again pre-market you know we talked about all the tickers i'm looking at fairly slow uh pre-market but uh last week for example we had just one freaking intense open after another no matter how chill pre-market was so we've also had a lot of midday and late day runners as well so the market i feel like has shifted over quite a bit lately where pre-market has really simmered down quite a bit. Yeah, if it's good, for sure, Colby. Man, this weekend was such good weather. I don't know how it was for everybody else, but here in uh, Berlin at the moment, it was just, I mean, it was like a proper summer day here. PTE, yep, yep, yep. Good reminder for sure. USA Biotech, 60, 65 million mark cap, 75 million float. This is what the one with the catalyst that came out at eight on the diabetic foot ulcer trial, met primary and secondary endpoints. So definitely a good one to keep watching here. Let's go ahead and map out a few more. Actually, I think we already did that on this one. Yeah, we did map out areas already. So next big zone is one five, then I would argue 175 and then off to two. Those are kind of the critical zones on this ticker. Very uh, consistent here on that. <laughs> Isn't the weather always good there, <laughs> Jonathan? All right, good volume there on PTE. Heck yeah, that's what we like to see. Uh, that's unfortunate, Brad. Actually, this week, this whole week is going to be rain after today in Berlin. So basically back to normal, unfortunately. <laughs> Let 
Another five minutes here before the market opens. Good time to update the time force today and just kind of get ready. Anyone trading PTE right now? It's crawling quite nicely. Okay, bit attendees is playing on PTE at the open. Are you planning it to hold it into the open or just trade it in that, you know, first candle? Misa was a Misa was a hectic one. Yeah, but at the same time, you know, PTE. I'm not sure if they're going to want to do an offering right away because they need to keep their stock price over a dollar, or else they're going to go get delisted. So they might want to keep it there for a little bit longer. LEDs popping up again. This ticker always kind of coming back from the woodwork. It's had a nice multi-day run uh, last week. I wouldn't be surprised if we maybe hit 10.5 or so, but that's going to be that's going to be a heavy-duty uh, double top after a failed breakout. So I'm not sure if we'll hold it, but maybe we will. Maybe we will hold it and keep on breaking there. Technically, on the daily chart, this was a healthy pullback, so we might see a little continuation. I think it's it's definitely worth watching. DTS as kind of selling off already kind of disappearing. CFMS. You know, technically this one's holding the highs well, but hmm. Good luck with this swing. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, guys. Another 30 seconds here. Good luck, everyone. I got 2,000 shares ready to go because a lot of these tickers are, are fairly low priced today. So we'll see. Alfie could be setting up. It's going to be an interesting to watch. Here's an open with Alfie or ALF.
getting close to some pretty big support here on ALF, but that was a big sell off there, almost 10%. 4.5 is gonna be a key psychological zone. So if we break this area, yeah, actually we did break it to 49. Sometimes those are great dip buys. Leeds is actually running here really well. Instantly shooting to 10.5. Alfie back up. SNDL doing work here. So it was good, but we didn't get that second fill on it. Holding this one still as a swing trade, so we'll see how high it goes. Very small size on it. Leads is still running. Wow, look at DTSS picking back up here, looking really good. Nice pump there on LADS. Taiwan Semiconductor, 2 million float, 42 million market cap. It was in an article, 10 best tech stocks to buy right now under <clears throat> LEDS right now, lead gapper, percentage wise and dollar volume wise, not always the case. Yeah, we're looking at it in a little bit. Possible entry on LEDS. Small size there at 77, very small size. Long full size, or actually no, long half size on that pullback. Looking for a break past 11.5. Five. Spreads a little bit bigger on this one. I'm gonna zoom out of here a little bit. Good volume on it for sure. Closing out there, sold half right before at 11 and then sold the other half into the breakout. About a $460 profits on LEDS just on that last trade. About a 4% profit. Nice move there, good breakout. Congrats to anyone else that jumped on that. Next place we're gonna to go to is around 13. I'm not sure if we're gonna hit it, but could, 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 could be. High of there at 13.4. 45%, then we had a pullback, and you now we're around 30%. Thanks, guys. 50, let's see how this minute holds up. Half size, actually quarter, quarter size. Taking some small profits there. I'm waiting for a larger pullback here. 
Oh wow, it actually broke out again. I was not expecting that. Just wanted a little bit of a quickie. Very, very small win. <clears throat> DTS, I know Alfie is still selling off here quite a bit. Might find a bottom, but uh, I don't know. That sell momentum was not very promising. Maybe around closer to 4, 410 or something. LEDS, though, is, is the clear winner right now. So I think this is the one I want to keep watching. Bit of a pullback there on LEDS. Still a front side move. That last sell volume was kind of high, though. It was a green candle, though. Nine thirty six AM CFMS is kind of holding this area pretty well. It's still in that first leg. It tried to sell off here a little bit stronger. A little bit annoying to trade a ticker in this area, so sometimes using join the bid is the way to go when you trade a ticker like this. Big volume overall on it. Possible good upside. Nice pullback there on leads. Now, if you were quick on leads, that would have been a pretty snazzy little buy. Leads at 50% up on the day. Got a bit of a size here on CFMS. Very small size. Yeah, it didn't hold. I was thinking maybe we we're going to get that breakthrough. Just gonna close this one out. Oh, just missed that. All right, took a small loss here on CF, um, CFMS. That's fine. Leeds selling off a little bit as well. I was thinking Leeds could, could be in a good setup, but I felt like I had better potential with CFMS, but it looks like it didn't hold there. So we took a small loss on it. Watching leads again. ALFI guys just doesn't stop selling off right now at 425. Who's going for this lead dip buy here? This could actually be quite nice. Still in a total uptrend. Still looking very healthy. New five minute candles are gonna be starting soon. You always wanna be thinking what, what the five minute candles are gonna be looking like. Five minute candles are your entries. Five minute candles will let you identify the trends. See if MS didn't really sell off that much. Let's see if it, if it keeps, keeps selling off. But technically, we're not really down that much. I mean, we're pretty much where we opened. LEDS now had a little bit more of a pullback. About to start a new five minute candle right now. PTIX halted. Oh wow, yeah, what a move there on PTIX. Great call out there. It's not a classic ticker I'd usually be jumping on, but 
Next stop, four. I'm long S and DL. Let me quickly go to it. So this is the one I was talking about. It could be a little bit of a swing trade for us. Wow, look at that sell-off it had. It almost feels like a catalyst just came out. Let me quickly see here. Not really seeing anything. Either way, very, very, very small position size and still thinking about maybe an overnight for that one. Okay, go back to leads here. Good bounce. We hit that high of 12. Broke even past it. 13 is really the place that I think people are, are, you know, got their eyes on here with LEDs. It's definitely all in the realm of possibility. Nice break out there on LEDs. Let's keep watching this one. Look at RHE, somehow it's just coming back, guys. RHE just, what? I love the energy on this ticker. It makes me so happy. Even, even when I don't even trade it, I, I like it. Putting a limit order on LEDs just in case it has a fast move down here. Good volume on this ticker. Moving limit orders for now. Could be another buy opportunity though. It's just kind of hard to gauge it. I want to see moving to the 13s. I really think LEDs could see 13. Alf went into the teens, now had a 5% bounce. It's actually pretty good. CFMS is still struggling a bit. <laughs> Here goes LEDs. With LEDs had a perfect pullback. I probably should have jumped on it. I'm not even really totally sure why I didn't. But uh, okay, there's there's the flush that I was probably really worried about. I don't know something something told me that it was a little bit too soon, or I didn't have full trust in this ticker. I mean, it's a, it's a big multi-day runner here, um, and sometimes I get nervous, you know, when it's no longer that first or second green day, because I just feel like it's so extended. Um, so I guess that intuition this time did, did help me, but technically I, I who knows, I, I would have maybe taken profits quickly knowing myself and then could have walked away with some profit, but oh well. 944, almost 945. Here we go, 945. So let's keep, keep watching here. LEDs could come back to down to 10.5. That might be a great opportunity to buy it. Big support down there. 
PT high X. <laughs> what a what a beast this ticker is. It should be opening up pretty soon here. It was halted at thirty nine fifty five. Should be open, honestly. Maybe it's a ten minute halt. Could be a ten minute halt on PTIX. Double O seven says ten minutes. I, I agree. I mean, it has to be at this point. Hopefully, it's only ten minute. R H E watching, watching, watching. Could be an opportunity. R H E is so similar to L E D S. So similar. P T E with a pretty much perfect pullback here. To be honest, I was not really, really watching PTE anymore. This has room to run till one five. Possible size at thirty three. Let's hope we can get a little bit more size there just now. Long PTE, 133. Full size there at 33. Still struggling a little bit. Not yet. I'm roughly a little over half size on this one. I think the question is, can we break towards that 1.5 zone. That's really the big question here. I'm gonna let it see if we can hold here and then try for one more attempt here to break past 175. I, I don't know, I couldn't hold. Maybe I sold too soon. I don't know, it's hard to say. Watching it here, possible second entry.
looking okay. Watch and doing all right. No. Yeah, unfortunately, I gave back a little bit of profits there on PTE. Still looking kind of interesting. I'm not necessarily against it, but this pullback here didn't work, and you gotta be careful. So I cut my losses there twice. But you know what? I don't regret it. There was great upside potential there, and I would do that trade again any day. So don't really regret it. Um, this time it didn't work out. So let's keep looking around here. Uh, PTIX opened up again there. Pretty nice, pretty nice action. DTSS had a huge bottom bounce. Well, not a huge one, but a nice bottom bounce, which I, I saw on a second screen, but I didn't jump on it. Um, yeah, at the moment I'm up 280 bucks. Nothing really to run home about. Nothing really to be too stoked, but. Hey, I don't know. We'll, we'll see if if uh, we could keep trading. I'll go for it. But uh, you know, the the opportunities aren't aren't mind blowing at the moment. Um, yeah. So we closed the last size there at twenty eight. I think it was. So yeah, definitely cutting the losses was the right idea on PTE. It's nine fifty two. But technically this ticker is still in the upwards trend, might be shaking out some hands. We have big support here at 25. I might do one last attempt here at 25 if we do reach it. it looks like it is bouncing a little bit already. I'm not sure if I'm gonna get my fill. I'm gonna close this one out again. Um, so PTE is um, down 300 on this one. This is the this is the ticker I'm down the most on at the moment. So sometimes when I'm down the most on a ticker, it usually sometimes will mean, Alex, you should probably just stop trading that one. Clearly, uh, you're not in the good flow with it. ALF down 16%. That's kind of a lot. I was I was thinking that ALF might be another opportunity, but uh, I don't know. That volume on ALF is pretty much non-existent at the moment. Nice move there on LEDS. Maybe we are gonna hit that 13. That sell pressure on PTE is is real for sure. It's hard to say where there's support on this one. You know, it's not like a clear pattern anymore. You could just d be dip trading this one and scalping, but um, yeah, actually that, that's probably be the best thing probably to do on it at the moment. DTSS, I gotta say, is kind of doing all right, but it had that big false breakout, and now it's you know getting towards the VWAP again. I would have liked to trade this one a little bit earlier, and I think I would have already dropped it, so I don't want to be buying where I would be selling if I did buy it earlier, so it's not a trade for me at the moment. LEDS does kind of look quite interesting, but last time we hit this shoulder, we flushed, so that's kind of keeping me at bay. Uh, on it a little bit, but technically it's a perfect pullback right now and has great opportunity. PTIX, nice little pullback there actually, really nice.
Could be over though. If you guys are new here, consider uh, subscribing. We'd love to see you again, some new faces. And if you guys are enjoying the content, don't forget to drop a like. I really do appreciate it. Uh, if you guys want to learn more about what we do here, we have a whole entire free foundation video series here at the link, tradejournal.co forward slash connect. And uh, you'll learn everything that you know we do here in a few hours, at least the concepts, the basics. And then after that, it's really just practice. So keep it simple, guys. Yeah, if we don't see another trade, I might have to walk away. Um, we might get some more midday opportunities. DTSS technically is setting up right now with a potential pullback. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if today was again like a midday or late day uh, trading session. Uh, it was unfortunate that my last two trades, I gave back 300 bucks. You know, we were up around 500, but still, you know, it's... Uh, I mean, obviously 500 is nicer than 250, but it was, it was you know, slower day opportunities were a little bit scarce. Um, but hey, you know, I think, I think we, we did all right for, for what there was. <laughs> I still feel like PTE is a, a potential trade, but right now there's, there's no real setup. We're on the backside and this is a potential dead cat bounce and you know, you might just get caught in another flush here. So risk reward on PTE right now is not very favorable, but on the five minute, it feels like we could be in a nice uh, ascending channel or something like that, which, you know, makes makes the five minute chart on, um, on this ticker a little bit nicer. Uh, just kind of a little bit, actually, well, it's almost like a wedge or something here. So maybe around 19 or so, we'll see a little bit more support. I don't know. <laughs> Appreciate that, Steven. Man, I would love to keep on trading, honestly. <laughs> but that's like, that's not why you should keep trading. You know, on Friday, we kept on trading. We we went like another 20 minutes uh, after 10 o'clock um, before we stopped the stream. I mean, you know, there was one opportunity after another. And I was, you know, if we get that today, I, I would have minded it. LEDS, look at this. I was a little bit too chicken here. We had that pullback. We popped up another 5%. I should have just been ready to go on this ticker. Really, really good. Really, really good buy opportunities on this one. So it looks like I, I pulled the I pulled the plug on it just a tad bit too soon. I did feel like we were going to hit 13 on this one. So right now we're on the way towards 13. We did break that double top potential, so that's good. BFARF. I know I wasn't really watching this one. OTC. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm usually not day trading OTCs. Wow, ALF just had that flush, huh? That pretty much takes ALF out of the game. There could be some dead cat, you know, bounce potentials or dip buy potentials, but uh, I don't know. It's it's a rough one. Let me quickly. Uh, well, okay. So if we wrap up right now, which I think we're gonna do, we're up two ninety. Uh, so you know, more you know, more than I had uh, when the day started. So I can't really complain. Obviously, we are long S and DL here a little bit for a possible overnight trade. Um, I have very small size here, not even 5k yet, so I'll probably end up dip trading this one more time. I'll see how it goes intraday, and then I might close out. I'll be sure to post that in the watch list or in the uh, Discord, and if you guys are not in the Discord, tradejournal.co forward slash connect, that's where you can really get everything uh, that we talk about here, tradejournal.co forward slash connect. Just scroll down, here's the Discord group. Um, so I'll let you guys know in the stock trading swing section if I close SNDL, otherwise, um, you can pretty much assume I'm going to keep holding on to it. 
uh, for a little bit longer here. So it's, it really, you know, this is very small cell volume, which make me, which is, you know, make me a little bit more promise. If let's say midday we we hold our lows or something like that, I probably won't won't end up holding it. But if we do see a little bit more continuation from SNDL. I think it's had, or like a little, nice little bounce back up and then starting to hold maybe a little bit higher, uh, higher, uh, higher numbers, then I would be a little bit more optimistic. But for now, this ticker has sold back a lot, sold off a lot. I have a very, very small size in it. Uh, I am able to average down. Um, and But you know, for now, we'll, we'll see what happens. I, I did technically buy this one on Friday, so SNDL. Uh, I, I bought this one originally on Friday. You can kind of see here. Um, let me just go back to the five minute chart. And uh, once this big support area cracked, uh, but did not hold, uh, it, we did not go to new lows and not stay there. I felt kind of optimistic after we bounced really aggressively back up. I bought the big support here, um, a limit order. And then um, again, pre-market, it was looking a little bit weak, so I sold. Um, with the intention to potentially buy back and do the same trade again. So I locked in some profits and then I'm basically doing the same trade again. Um, I never got really big size here either. So we'll see. Um, obviously this was a huge sell off here. So it looks like a lot of people are you know jumping out at this one. Um, so I don't know, I'm a little bit nervous uh, in terms of you know throwing on more size right now, but uh, I, I, you know, I feel comfortable holding it. Um, yeah, sweet. So that pretty much wraps it up, I think, for today. Uh, again, here, this is the trading stats for the day. LEDS was the winner. PE, PTE was the loser. Um, so right at the end of the day, I kind of gave back a little bit of profits. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Don't forget to check out, if you're watching this on playback, um, we have the watch list in the first pinned comment below that I will be posting. And then uh, in the beginning of this video, obviously, is when I review the tickers a little bit more. Yeah, yeah, Milera, I, uh, you know, I, I left a lot of profits on the table with LEDS, I feel like, but oh well, it is what it is. All right, guys, that's everything for now. Then I will see you then first thing tomorrow morning. Like always, stay safe, make some awesome trades, and don't forget to drop a like on the way out. Peace out, everyone. Ciao, ciao. Whoop.